In this video, we're gonna talk about the most underrated, overlooked camera, especially when it comes to aspiring filmmakers. Stay tuned. Hey everybody and welcome back to Glints and Glam TV Productions. I'm your host Jonathan Rindos and I will be talking about the most underrated overlooked camera in my opinion for aspiring filmmakers because you know as you know uh, when you're just starting out you really don't have any money and when you start doing research you see some of the gear people are using you know the cinema cameras I mean we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars it gets crazy. Uh, you know, pretty much um, for the cinema line, you're looking at at least a few grand just to get started. But one camera that has been overlooked, and I've been using this for, for quite a while now, uh, it'll be a year this summer, is the Canon EOS M100, which I have in my hands right now. This camera is actually quite amazing and one of the reasons why it often gets overlooked is because this is in the m series i don't know what gave that away m100 um, but it's it's in the same series as the m50 and the m50 gets all the love because that's the flagship camera for that series um, but for the m50 you're looking at six hundred dollars um, almost seven. When, it, when the camera first came out, it was probably around $1,000. I think it, it came down significantly. This I got for $300, about a little over $300. And I mean just a little over $300. I bought it refurbished from Canon's website. Go to um, Canon, I'll put the link in the description for the Canon website where you can look at refurbished cameras. Um, and this, this camera was about $300. These go on sale. Uh, a lot of people don't want them because they're just, they're not highly sought after. Uh, you could buy this brand new from B&H and I'll put a link down in the description for that. If, you, if you're one of those people that like to buy brand new, trust me, I understand. Uh, this will go for about four, $450 with the kit lens, which is still not bad. But if you're looking to save even more money and your budget is tight, which I understand. That's why I bought it refurbished. And I, and I gotta tell you, it works just as good as new. This, this camera hasn't failed me yet. And I bought it for about 300, 300 bucks. It was like $305. Not bad at all, especially for what this camera can do. So I could go over all the details of this camera, but I decided, and this is why I'm so excited about this video. I decided to make a short movie for you guys, a mock film and I'm gonna include it in this video so you guys can see the potential of this camera. Now please don't judge my movie making skills. I'm not, I, I, I don't even call myself a filmmaker, um, but check this out. Sir, please, I need to see the garden, need to see the garden indeed. Do you know why this garden is so heavily guarded? Yes, yes I do. Then you know why I shall not let you pass. You don't understand. I promised my mother, your mother, 
What on earth does this garden have to do with your mother? She lost a bracelet here when she was a little girl. It was her favorite. It means the world to her. I need to find it. I need to find it for her. As you wish. Just know that once you pass this gate, you are on your own. Thank you, sir. So I hope you guys enjoyed my cheesy film, and if nothing else, got a laugh out of it. Uh, but this, the whole point of this, this little mock film was to just demonstrate the power of this camera. And I will say that um, I did not shoot this film in auto mode. This, this camera does really good in auto mode for like, say, vlogging, if you're gonna vlog with it, and it has a flip up screen. So it is, it is great for vlogging, but when it comes to filmmaking, you definitely want to shoot in manual mode because one thing about this is, uh, and this is what this is where this really starts to differ from a cinema camera, is it does not shoot in high bit rates. So you're very limited with how much you can push this footage in post. If I were to try to get the look that I achieved with this mock film from shooting in auto, I probably would have turned the footage into garble. And what I mean is when this shoots at a bit rate of 24 megabits per second. And when you go to push the colors in post, you can't really push it too much before it starts to break down, before the film starts to break down and you get artifacts and it just looks like crap. Um, so the way to remedy that is you just want to try to shoot the scene as close to the way you want it to look as possible when actually filming. Um, so a lot of times, because I wanted the scenes to be a little darker, I had to put it in manual mode and I adjusted the, uh, the aperture. And I, and I, and I put, the, put the aperture way down and I had nice darker scenes. Uh, so that's just a, just a tip. Uh, but but really, you know, as a filmmaker, you really should learn manual controls on your camera because that's when you really unlock the true power of filmmaking and setting the mood for your films. 
So anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that little mock film. And if you would like me to um, do any more videos on the Canon EOS M100, maybe a walkthrough in the settings and the settings that I use, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to do that. All right guys, take it easy and enjoy this beautiful day.